What if a wormhole ripped open in the sky or the ground and our planet was met with an interdimensional doomsday scenario reminiscent of Stranger Things? Unless the government is housing a bunch of superhuman 11s somewhere in a desert bunker, we might be pretty screwed. How would we face the perils of the upside down? CERN's 27-kilometer Large Hadron Collider whips elemental particles around at super high speeds and then crashes them into each other with such force that they rip apart. It's helping us understand how the quantum world works and allowing us to find new forms of matter. But could particle accelerators like the LHC also rip apart the very fabric of our universe? The Large Hadron Collider is a modern marvel. It's the world's largest scientific instrument. It's helping us figure out what exactly is going on with the matter we're made of and how it behaves at the tiniest scales in most energized states. But does using it pose a threat to our existence? British astrophysicist Martin Rees has warned that large particle accelerators like the one at CERN could potentially create some pretty crazy apocalyptic scenarios. There are basically three ways our life as we know it would cease to exist if something went horribly wrong with the Large Hadron Collider or similar technologies. The first worry that Reese has is that these massive particle accelerators can create things called strangelets. Strangelets are hypothetical particles that, if they come into contact with the matter on our planet, could condense it to the size of a soccer field. How would this work? First, we have to understand what matter is made of. All atoms are made of quarks. There are six types of quarks that we know of. The up quark, down quark, charm quark, top quark, bottom quark, and strange quark. Of these, only the up and down quarks have masses that actually make up the matter as we know it on Earth. The rest decay very quickly into other stuff. But back in the 1970s, physicists wanted to play with the idea of what would happen if atoms were subjected to super-extreme pressures and energies. In their models, atoms were pressurized to the point where their protons and neutrons burst apart into quarks. Under even more pressure, the up and down quarks could condense and some could turn into stable, heavier, strange quarks. If stability is reached, then you get strange matter. This matter could proliferate as strangelets or pieces of strange matter. If this happens, then strangelets would basically spread through the universe like a virus. All other matter these viral particles come into contact with would be attracted to the stability and mass of strangelets and immediately convert to its highly compressed state. This means that if a strangelet hit the Earth, our planet would condense to the size of an asteroid. If a strangelet hit the Sun, it would condense into a strange star and Earth would freeze. Strangelets would essentially float through the universe, turning everything they came into contact with strange. All matter would eventually become strange matter. Our universe would be a literal episode of Stranger Things. So, should we worry that the experiments going on at the Large Hadron Collider could produce an upside-down-esque universe of strange matter? The folks at CERN say, don't worry. The Large Hadron Collider is not nearly powerful enough to produce the environments necessary for quarks to morph into stable strange matter. One report noted that it was about as likely as making an ice cube in a furnace. If strangelets and strange matter are physically possible, their most likely generator would be neutron stars. Neutron stars are the densest things in the universe other than black holes. The pressure within these stars is so high that they could be ripping apart atoms and turning up and down quarks into strange quarks. Eventually, the strange matter created would consume the neutron star, turning it into a strange star. But a strange star would just continue being strange, floating around by itself, not infecting anything else. However, if two strange stars collided, they would eject strangelets into the universe and they would speed along through space, strangifying anything they touched. Whew. 
The second theory is that a large particle accelerator could create a massive black hole that would suck up our Earth and possibly the entire solar system. There's a lot we don't know about black holes, but physicists have a pretty good idea that they're created when enough mass and energy is condensed into a small enough amount of space. The black holes that we've observed in our universe were created after massive stars collapsed at the end of their lives. There's the possibility that when tiny particles smash into each other like they do in CERN's Large Hadron Collider, they could actually create little tiny black holes, not a huge Earth-eating one. Physicists theorize that this would be possible if there were more than three dimensions. Complex mathematical models based on string theories say that at certain super high energies, these little black holes could form in six or even ten dimensional space. These dimensions, if they exist, are curled into tiny loops within the space we already know exists. String theory posits the existence of gravitons or hypothetical force carriers for gravity. Gravity is currently not incorporated into the standard model of particle physics, and its force is left out of the math and observations that go on at a micro level. Finding gravitons could help bridge the gap between the standard model and the quantum realm. These particles, as well as other particles like photons and bosons, are not single-point particles, but instead minuscule ribbons of energy or strings that vibrate in different ways. String theory's equations are dense, but they're extremely elegant and, more importantly, extremely consistent. These ribbons are curled up into tiny balls of space less than 10 to the minus 33 centimeters wide. However, the strings themselves and these tiny coils of interdimensional space are far too small to be measured by anything like the Large Hadron Collider. 10 million billion times smaller than anything the particle accelerator can detect. So, if there are tiny black holes being torn through interdimensional space as particles crash into each other, should we be worried? Well, probably not. The Earth is actually bombarded every day by particles that collide with the atmosphere at energies more than a hundred million times greater than what can be produced at the Large Hadron Collider. It's possible these little guys are already here around us, but we just haven't been able to observe them yet. And if they're here, they clearly haven't managed to engulf our planet yet. Also, these tiny black holes would be super unstable, and if they do exist, they would exist for a time so brief that we could barely even call it time. Their decay time, as perceived in our own three-dimensional world, would be 10 to the power of negative 83 seconds. For physics to have any meaning or use to us at all, the smallest time we can use is about 10 to the power of negative 43 seconds. The third problem that could arise from all those particles colliding at CERN is that it could potentially rip open space-time itself. According to Rees, the vacuum of space that we normally think of as empty is actually full of more stuff than we realize, and it might be quite fragile. In theory, a powerful enough particle accelerator could potentially tear apart space itself by creating something called a phase transition. Phase transitions happen all the time. They happen when water changes to ice or steam. They happen when atoms ionize or lose one of their electrons. These transitions are very common. The claim that a man-made instrument could tear apart the fabric of the universe has been pretty solidly refuted, however. There are forces at work so far beyond the capacity we have to recreate. Things like the birth and death of stars, quasars that shine brighter than entire galaxies, and supermassive black holes exist at energy scales that we couldn't possibly hope to achieve through building something like a large particle accelerator. We might not need to be so worried about particle accelerators ending the universe as we know it, at least not at the scales they're built to now. Maybe in the future, if we build one across the entire diameter of the Earth or the Sun, we'd have problems. It's also important to note that even Martin Rees has been quoted saying these apocalyptic scenarios are very, very unlikely to happen. For now. 
For now, what the Large Hadron Collider is doing, though, is discovering new particles. It's helping us understand the quantum world and possibly recreate the very formation of our universe. It may help us figure out what dark matter is and whether or not there really are any observable extra dimensions. It's been up and running again for a few months after a few years' hiatus. During that time, it was tweaked and improved. Now that it's back up, physicists at CERN have already discovered three new particles. Well, they're not really particles so much as they are combinations of them. They're called pentaquarks and tetraquarks. Normally, matter as we know it is made up of a combination of three quarks. The proton, for example, contains two up quarks and one down quark. But recently, thanks to particle accelerators, researchers have been finding penta and tetraquarks, particles with four and five quark configurations. After the most recent run at the Large Hadron Collider, scientists found three new types of these particles. They're often called exotic particles, and they barely exist. They pop in and out of existence within a hundred thousandth of a billionth of a billionth of a second. But their brief stint in space and time may help us figure out what happened at the very beginning of the Big Bang. As more and more of these things are observed, scientists can begin putting together a sort of periodic table for exotic particles and lead to a better understanding of the very micro-level forces that affect the very fabric of existence. So, the Large Hadron Collider may not end the universe as we know it, but it may help us figure out how it came to be like this in the first place.